A new museum is about to reveal the history of Australia's Jewish community. The first Jews arrived here as convicts aboard the First Fleet. Now, their story has been told. While the museum celebrates the contributions of Australian Jews for 200 years, Holocaust survivors act as guides to also tell of the painful past. The late 70s, 80s, more and more survivors decided now to break their silence and to talk. John Saunders gave us the financial help to have this old building, the Maccabian Hall, converted. The inside was gutted, whereas the outside is protected by the Heritage Society, cannot be changed. So we walked over rubbles when we came in, and I said, John, I can't imagine how will this function, how will it be a museum? beautifully. Witnessing the other survivors and te them telling their story, I think him building this museum gave him purpose to his pain. I know you guys see the benefactor and the founder, but you know, I see my daddy. <laughs> This museum is so special because we act as a bridge between the Jewish community and the community at large. We are the largest place that gets to be the keepers and protectors of Jewish history and Jewish stories, but also the communicators of those. Often museums are places where it's a showcase and it's an object. What's very different about the Sydney Jewish Museum is this combination of personal storytelling with these objects, such powerful testimony. Full of there's one thing to open a book and study history, but there's another to walk through it and hear those voices and be shaped by that. And so coming here and being part of this experience, I know these students will carry it with them. The general population often is not exposed to our story uh, and this is one of the most important tools we have to expose the general population to matters that are important to us. So it's really become a perfect time for the work that's being done in this museum by all the guides and, and survivors to have as big an impact as possible in this unfortunate rise of anti-Semitism across the world. The museum is the only uh, collecting institution, cultural institution in Australia with a human rights gallery. It asks our visitors to reflect and to consider the lessons of the Holocaust and also to think about the human rights landscape today in Australia. This is now a kind of modern, efficient, professionally run institution, which in my view has emerged as a world-class institution. We're certainly trying to engage the second and third generation because they are going to be the storytellers, the history tellers of the future. To give them the translation. The Sydney Jewish Museum's Youth Committee is a group of young people who are working with the Sydney Jewish Museum. We are the people who are going to continue the legacy of Holocaust survivors and Holocaust remembrance. Side by side, and I sold you out. I love how the museum empower survivors to speak. They don't get other people to speak on their behalf, and so I love that they're doing the same for youth. And Jack has been coming to the museum every week, every Thursday, since 1992. 
It is such an enormous privilege to work with Holocaust survivors. They give me perspective every single day about um, what they've overcome and their incredible resilience. And I feel just so, so lucky that I get to do this work. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Have a good Shabbos. I'll see you next time. Temporary exhibitions really kicked off at the Sydney Jewish Museum in the year 2000 when we had the Trezestat within the walls exhibition, followed by the Jews from Shanghai. It's not black and white, Jewish South Africans dressing Sydney, the right trade. We've had Jews from Islamic lands. We've had Wendy Sharp and now Sydney Nolan. We're really excited because the first exhibition that's going to go in here, it's an exhibition of Sidney Nolan paintings that he did of Auschwitz. It was very much a response to the Eichmann trials that were taking place in Jerusalem. And there was worldwide coverage of Adolf Eichmann and the crimes that he had committed. And there were many um, survivors coming to the fore talking about the, the experiences and what they'd gone through. original artworks. They were all in Nolan's private collection. No one really knows him for this series on Auschwitz and I think this exhibition is groundbreaking in that sense. That we've recognized the significance of this and can therefore take it and present it to the world. With the USC Shore Foundation, we filmed six survivors over the period of one week each. With these thousand questions, we have now fed this into an AI, somewhat like Siri or Alexa. So when you ask the survivor a question, it will pull the clip. Oh God, do you believe in God? I believe in God, yes, although have I have never received the postcard yet. I don't know. <laughs> At the end of November, we're going to be opening an exciting new exhibition called Reverberations, A Future for Memory. And this is going to be a space where we're going to highlight some of this exciting material that we have captured over the years, but has never yet before seen. And so visitors can come and they can hear survivors reflect on some really important questions like forgiveness or revenge. There will also be an opportunity to interact with three of our interactive biographies. It was always uh, a dream, actually, of some members of the association to have a library as part of the museum. And so two years into it, they decided to go ahead. And uh, I came in to the museum and had the first computer in the museum <laughs> and started collecting. Uh, appropriate material and building up the collection, which is now, you know, sort of probably 12,000 volumes. The most important collection in the library are the personal testimonies. I feel comfortable. I feel rather happy. In the time that I've been here, large numbers of survivors have passed away. Our name with our number on it, and a few weeks later, that in our lifetime. And it really, on the one end, is a very uplifting place to work. And this is how I go through life. When you see just how they can relate, how they've rebuilt their lives, despite all the trauma that they went through. But at the same time, it's a very sad place because we are consistently losing members of our own family. Friends, family and fellow survivors came to remember someone who called himself the happiest man on earth. Eddie died in October at the age of 101. Eddie, how are you? Hi, Roslyn. Eddie. Bonjour, ça va? Ça va. The museum for the for the survivors becomes like a second home. All of the volunteers and the staff, of course, is 
like one big family. And this is a very important feeling for me because I have lost my immediate family during the Holocaust. We all come from different countries, different stories, different experiences. But when we come here, we've got a common thread. This museum, it triggered, yeah, or it uh, reignited, yeah, um, not only vignettes of my memory of my past, but also very important of developing a Jewish identity. I think that we all look for some sort of external institution that, that reflects us, that validates us, that talks about our history, that um, represents our community. And this was the place that I meant to be. I was meant to be in. Yeah. And I was really fortunate to have an incredible time of 20 years at the Sydney Jewish Museum. And I literally get out of bed every morning and look forward to coming to work. This really is the pinnacle of my career. Um, being here at the Sydney Jewish Museum. Our whole community owes an enormous debt of gratitude to the survivors um, who, in many cases, have dedicated their lives, have dedicated you know, the 30 years since the founding of this museum for telling the story. This is what they gave us at the opening ceremony of the museum. Today we have a very strong and solid volunteer team because of those first survivors. It's a very special photo, isn't it? It is. It, it is. really is. How do you feel when you see it? I belong here. Absolutely. A great achievement for us survivors to see such a successful Museum, they, I have great confidence in the young people that they will carry on and it will go on forever and ever. Ready, one, two, three. Three.